Hello. Yeah. Nice to see you again. <laughs> 40 years of raids. Exactly. Do you believe that? <laughs> no, I don't believe it. <laughs> but, it's, uh, uh, go ahead, means please. I'm, a, I'm an old motherfucker. <laughs> don't uh, say wow. that. Yeah, but actually, I'm very grateful that uh, I'm still, uh, we're still here, that we still can do this, and uh, I know that we, uh, that this belongs to the fans, to the true fans that support us of all these years. So we're really grateful for that. <clears throat> yeah. uh, so I was. The new album, it's not really a new album, it's a it's two albums. Yes. So uh, why did you, uh, what did the band decide to release two albums and not, let's say, one and maybe, I don't know, next year, something like that? <laughs> um, the thing is, uh, first of all, I always wanted to do a, a double album, at least once in my career. Uh, first, the, fir the first idea, uh, plan was back in 2006 when we did Speak of the Dead to have mm -hmm. this as a double album, but Nuclear Blast at this point, they didn't really support the idea, so uh, it didn't happen. And now this, uh, a couple of things came together. First of all, uh, after the release of uh, Resurrection Day, the last album before, uh, we had planned to tour and... Uh, excessively because it was uh, and there was still the pandemic times you know and uh, another lockdown came over europe so we had to cancel our tour we had to delay all the all the tour dates for at least two or three times we had to reschedule everything so it was plenty of time left over where we couldn't do anything else and just write new songs and me and gene we just just sat together and collected ideas and um after a couple of months we, we realized hey we have a shitload of good brand new ideas uh, this is long uh, long uh, this is even more than we could uh, that we would need for one album so i uh, the idea came back in my head here oh then maybe this is a chance now to do this double album that you always wanted to do <laughs> and then uh, of course there this this 40 year anniversary was uh, coming up you know so the, then the idea was born to do this double album for the 40 year re uh, anniversary um, and we um, split up the ideas to to, uh, to two different records that uh, uh, became then after Lifelines in the end. You know. <laughs> and I love what you have done after Life and Lifelines, and you you connect the two words. Yeah, we connect those two words, and the word came. <laughs> and uh, yeah, both both albums are a little bit different from each other. I mean, it, it, they belong together, and I think I hope we made a, a kind of line through it and that climax is in the end you know and uh, but uh, the the first album reflects more the the heavy side of rage the, the thrashy um hearts hard songs you know and on the second disc there's more this epic ideas some more progressive ideas um that have also a full orchestration on it you know but all this uh, is still reflected in rage's history you know it's all parts of um, of the stylistic um, output of the band, you know. Honestly, looking at, uh, listening to Lifelines, the second record, it sounded like a Ligua Mortis album that wanted to be a Ligua Mortis, but still. <laughs> Although there is no, to my mind, there's no difference, but still. It's, it, it is in, made in this tradition, I would say, you know, it's mm -hmm. not the same exactly, you know, it's... Uh, some songs are really more, way more aggressive or so, but it's, it's definitely in this tra in this tradition, and uh, that's where what I said already. You know, this is a part of the rich com cosmos. You know, part of the stylistic uh, um, range that this band has in so long. You know? Right. I, I was trying to see uh, whether the ti the track "Lifelines" is the longest one that Rage have written. It, yeah, I could really. I mean, that. That, that, yeah, <laughs> Lifelines plus the, the the last two titles also this interlude, which is an orchestral interlude, and uh, and in the end, uh, all this is basically just like one track, <coughs> one long. Uh, we, I mean, we have done long tracks in the past, but this is even longer. <laughs> um, we we gave it three different titles due to some uh, legal uh, reasons, you know, because there were. Uh, already older compositions included in the, this interlude, you know, uh, there's some 
uh, famous rage melodies showing up there, you know. So it was not so so good to, to just release this under a different name, you know, as it would it would have been chaos for the for the writing rights, you know, for the, the credits. Yeah. Uh, man, I, I, I will tell you this, uh, and it's a secret, it will stay between the two of us. <laughs> Almost, I was moved by listening to Interlude because you throw there so many melodies, and I think you end up with Don't Fear the Winter. That's, I think, that's the end one. And I said, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you, yeah. It gives you that sweet nostalgia, but not in a bad way to remember your old days. No, no, it's like remember good things. And for yes. me, I mean, it speaks a lot. It speaks a lot of me to me, to my soul. Yeah, this is uh, the grand finale, you know. <laughs> there, I, there I go. I, I, I'm losing my words now. So, anyways, I will change subject because I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> it would be uh, okay. So, when I first uh, saw the album, I thought, and I hope I'm wrong in this, that okay, uh, PV is putting out all this music because that will be close to the end of raids. And I'm honest with you. So please tell me it's not the case. No, it's not the end of rage. <laughs> no, That's this not. is just uh, the, the, so far the state of the art the, where the band is, you know. Uh, we um, use this this uh, this year now to reflect a little bit what we have done over all this uh, decade, you know. There's also a bio biography of the band coming out in October. Ooh, um, I didn't know I wrote, that. Yeah, I wrote down all the of the story of the of these 40 years my my life the the life of the band you know and of course we uh and from from the next year on of course we will be set up for the future again you know <laughs> there's more to come so <laughs> hold on live, uh, when are you going to release this book in october this year <clears throat> october uh yeah. so this is international right what uh, we will be able to get it here in the States. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if when the English version comes out, I mean, if it also comes in October, maybe it comes a little bit later, but it's on the way. Okay, and you, I so guess you start from the Avenger days, right? Yes. Not even before, it starts with my childhood, you know. <laughs> That's What's the title? Or you cannot say uh, that? From the cradle to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so I... Uh, Okay, I, last question about the book. Uh, are you planning to do any book sets with some music with it or anything uh, related to music, to tie the book release with a mu with music? I don't know yet, you know, we, we are still in the making, you know, so we didn't really plan any promotional activities for this or so. Let's see. It, th did it feel any strange basically reviewing your entire life? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit strange. Um, Usually you just look. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking uh, forward, you know, to what's what, what's coming next, you know, and uh, this um, all these memories, you know. The, you, of course, sometimes some things come up, pop up here and there, you know. But it's not like you're really going with a plan, like trying to uh, mm -hmm. to think back to to what, what all is relevant, you know, what all should be told about the um, uh, the development. Why did it happen like this? You know, there's a lot to to um, also to, to 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 look for, you know, I, I had mm -hmm. to go through through lots of archives and had to go through a lot of um, old um, old material. You know, that just I have a I have a room where all the shit from Rage is put, I just put in, you know, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I had to had to go through all this. I mean, all these old pictures, all this old whatever shit, you know, uh, to. Um, get back into these memories you know like what the hell what the fuck when was this you know when we did we do this and all right. this, uh, the timeline was uh, uh, you know in in memory sometimes it all fades and then all, all like mixes up you know and to, to get this in a, in a um, proper timeline again you know was not so easy <laughs> oh no uh, did the fact that you were reviewing rage's history had anything to do with the uh, writing songwriting process for this album like you getting inspired by the band's own history. No, not really. I mean, the, when we uh, wrote the material, this was uh, already like um, more than two years ago when we when we when we collected these ideas. You know, okay. Uh, at, this, at this point, I wasn't really that much, that far to uh, 
that were at the book, you know, and uh, the ideas are pretty f fresh and new, you know. There's only one uh, idea, um, one song that that bases on an old idea. It's in the end, the very last one, you know. This melody comes from 1989 or so. This was was a demo I found for Reflections of a Shadow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Actually, it's all, this demo is already released on, a, on the re-release of Reflections of a Shadow, you know. I, I made a re-release of, of all the old albums on my own label, Dr. Bones, you know, and there's um, all they come out with, with lots of uh, extra material, demos and whatever leftover songs, you know. And I found this uh, from the demo sessions of Reflections of a Shadow. So, so it's a great, a great melody. It was just an instrumental track, you know. And so, you have been releasing al Rage albums on your own label? I yeah, Dr. Bones is my own label. I um, I nearly know. all of the of the back catalog is already out in, in luxury versions. Oh man, what are you doing to me? Anyways. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in uh, distribution of SPV also. Um, and um, there you just look on our on our website. You know? I will. I will. I, I may have bought there's something. A, okay. There's, there's an online shop, a web shop on our website, and we are everything's offered there. We deliver worldwide. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> who is doing the growling in a, under the black under a black crown and afterlife? Is it you doing all the vocals? Uh, well, a lot of the growls coming from Gene. I'm also growling here and there, but there's more, uh, a lot of also from Gene, and he's also having a solo spot in Dying to Live in the middle of the song. There's a little solo spot where he sings alone, and the last chorus of this song we share like a duet. So it's <laughs> Gene singing in Dying to Live? Yeah, also. in the middle. Ooh, right. I didn't... Song, just, just this middle part after the solo, you know. It's a short, it sounds, short, he sounds great, man. He has a voice similar to mine, but a lot younger, you know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, he could be my son. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, uh, for the uh, arrangements, for the orchestrations, you work with Marco uh, Grashoff, correct? Right, correct. So did all uh, all the instruments that we hear in the album were actually live ones? I mean, actually played, not digital versions of those? No, it's this is uh, he, he did with his orchestra programs. Oh, OK. Yeah, to okay. record a live orchestra, this is very expensive, very complicated, Oops. and the result is not even better. You know, this this modern orchestra programs they have the have the brilliant uh, orchestra sounds you can find on earth. Even mm -hmm. the the film scores are made meanwhile with this. You know, it uh, just doesn't make any sense anymore to to record a real orchestra. You know, which uh, you don't get better results from this. <laughs> <laughs> so when do these orchestral parts come into play. Do you have the song stru structure ready, the, the, the basic one, and then you start adding stuff? Yeah, we, we uh, arrange everything together, you know, with orchestra. Oh, OK. Marco, Marco was involved in the uh, whole production of the album. He lives not far away from where we live here, so we could easily meet with him and he could come to the studio. So it was quite easy to work with him. OK, OK. And now I have to ask with uh, about the lyrics um, because there are if I haven't um, paid ex I haven't gone through all the lyrics of course but I think there is a grim message you paint a rather grim picture right <laughs> and and, and I, I I cannot disagree <laughs> with that though <laughs> it's, you know, I'm not really a green guy you know I'm just uh, it's a red line going through the songs and it's uh, shows a bit, uh, uh, let's describe it like this. Uh, uh, it's, it starts where Resurrection Day ends, you know? Mm -hmm. On Resurrection Day, I described the, this uh, evolution, the cultural evolution of mankind from the Neolithic age to today. And uh, on the new album, it's a um, kind of fictional, dystopic view in the next hundred years in the future. And um, Basically, basically, I use my lyrics to uh, like a little bit of self therapy, you know, um, to write my fears, write down my fears, and get rid of them. You know, uh, it's not that I'm really thinking that much green or so, but I, but of course, I must be blind. Anybody must be blind not to see that we are like destroying our own resources here on on this globe, and uh, w with this, we are um, threatening our own existence. You know, we are. Right. 
uh, we, we take our own chances for the future. If we, uh, I'm not saying that we should go back to the, on the trees or so, you know, and, and, and uh, forget about all industrial things and forget about wealthiness and everything and go back in the cave and live, live like, uh, like our, our ancestors in Stone Age or so, you know, that's, <laughs> that's what some of these Green Party people actually are thinking or so, you know, like we can get, get rid of industrial industrialism or so, you know, that's not the case. That's what, not what I want to say, but we should take a bit more care about what we're actually doing. You know, there's a lot of useless things where we are just destroying resources for no reason, you know, yeah. that doesn't make it better for us, you know. So if you just think a bit more, a bit more detailed about what we're doing, what is necessary to have a good life, you know, and what is not necessary. So just um, differ this a little bit, you know. And yeah, absolutely. The idea behind it, you know. And as you said, we spend resources for some things that are not even useful, and then we have people still starving, people who don't have money to pay their own rent. I but mean, in, in in general, um, humanity has lives a lot better nowadays uh, than 200 years ago or so you know with all with, with all this in, industrial industrialization mm -hmm. uh, there, a lot of wealthiness came on on, on earth through to the people and even if even in the third world countries or the second world countries the people are now closing up to us you know with uh, uh, everybody has a smartphone meanwhile in in the even in the poorest countries they have smartphones they have there's no one really has to starve anymore it has to die from hunger so if uh, not some idiots start a war or so you know <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but but um still there's a, there's a lot of resources just annihilated for nothing you know doesn't for things that doesn't really make it better you know just because we are so lazy and don't care you know <laughs> yes yes and uh, there is a line in uh, Root of Our Evil, you say we are not so special, but still we think we are, man. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. so. <laughs> don't take ourselves too serious, you know. We, we think we are the, the like the, the top of evolution, you know. I wouldn't say so, you know. We are just one part of the evolution, you know. I mean, we, I mean it's not that we're, that we're nothing, you know. Uh, humanity has a right to be there, you know, to live, you know. Yeah, but of when course. It, it, also, the other beings have the right to live, you know. So we we shouldn't like think that we can rule the planet like, like however we want, you know. We yeah, we have to respect. To everything, you know? Yeah, we should just give room to everything. That's that's the idea behind it. Yeah, and then you have uh, one word too many people. That line. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, this is okay. This is uh, the the this explosion of. Uh, uh, I mean, we are how many. Billions we are now, eight, nine billions or so. It's uh, like we're, it's growing massively. It's like a snowball effect, you know. <laughs> yeah, and of, indeed. of course, uh, the more people we are, the more resources we take, you know. It's just because we live, you know. We, can, we can't do anything else. <clears throat> so we have to be more careful, you know. The more we are, the more careful we should be. Uh, for the album's cover artwork, we, you, you worked again with Karim. Um, what input did you give him, even though he has done several arrays? Uh, albums the, the yeah. art for this one what input did you give him because you know you wanted to have some references some connection to their previous raids albums we wanted to kind of this this uh, to have this uh, feeling or this scenario a little bit you know like this end time scenario thing you know like everything is destroyed and um he, he came up with uh with uh, plenty of different pictures, and I picked out the, the things that I liked the most, and we combined it into this cover. Great. Okay, Turi, uh, you just came from Canada, and it was the first time for AIDS being in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. How was it? Yeah, that's not, was nice, really good. We had also some some time to do some tourism things, you know. I went to the <laughs> Niagara Falls and stuff like this, you know. <laughs> Had Although great, had a great time, yeah. <laughs> I know that visas is a huge issue for the states. I mean, you were very close to to our side, to the east coast. Why didn't you <laughs> stop by Chicago and play a show for us? Because we would need uh, working permissions. And I know, I know, I know. It's expensive, you know. This is so massive what you have to pay if you want to work in the, in the states. You know, it's just inc incredible. You cannot afford this, you know. Because uh, the, the legal situation makes it hard for European bands to tour the States, you know. Is there any chance to see raids uh, in North US? Mm, yeah, maybe if, uh, if the laws change, if, if it gets a bit cheaper to come over, you know. 
I mean, for a small band like us, we, it's too expensive. Just you know, we yeah. we cannot we cannot make that much money that we would have to pay to just come over. You know, <laughs> I understand. Um, speaking of touring, you have Japan uh, and then Europe for the entire 2024. And as we said in the beginning, you have the 40th anniversary. Any special shows specifically for the 14th anniversary that you have uh, in your mind? Yeah, there's a couple of shows we play together with the Lingua Mortis Orchestra. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's one show that I look, I'm looking really forward for is a, a show in uh, uh, beginning of September here in my hometown, where we'll play with uh, not only with Manny and Chris, uh, we play some under the name Refuge, a couple of songs, you know. Like a, Damn. Uh, also, I also will play um, some songs with my very, very, very old mates from my absolute first band I ever had, you know, uh, which was that's not even demos existing from this the band was called The Dark Lights. <laughs> <laughs> we we started in by end of the seventies or so, you know, like seventy nine or so. We started with this, and. Um, the drummer of this of this very very first band, he's my neighbor. You know, we still are good friends. He's my neighbor, and we just wow. uh, we we sat down with a beer and said, "Yeah, it's the 40th anniversary already." You know, and then we came to this idea: why don't we play some shit again? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we agreed to play some stuff with also with the original guitar player from this time. You know, I'm gonna play a couple of songs. <laughs> so hold on, hold on. How many sets are you gonna do? You said with this band and then Refuge and then all all together in one show. It's gonna be one show under the name Rage, of course, but it's gonna be uh, some uh, several guest appearances. <laughs> How Same. long will the set list be? So I, I'm, I'm asking now <laughs> from a personal interest. Should I can make we, plans to go to see, Germany? We have we have op- they gave us open end for this, you know. <laughs> oh man! Okay, okay. It's a it's a it's a local. Uh, open air festival um, for free entrance, you know, and uh, we we mm, and we have uh, the last spot, you know, we have like the headlining spot, and we can play as long as we want. <laughs> okay, okay, that sounds very tempting. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for mentioning a uh, refuge. Um, I have been asking you in each interview: Are there plans to write music with the other two guys? Not at the moment, you know, we, okay. we, we just put everything on ice, but it's not forgotten, you know, and we're still in good contact and yeah, let's see what comes in the future. You know? Absolutely. At the moment, I'm so busy with Rachel, it's no, not really the time for it. And based on how the great the album has come out, I mean, I cannot, I am, I'm, I, I agree with you being re, uh, busy and with the rest of the stuff that you have. Bibi, thank you very much. Yeah, they're very welcome. I honestly you. love the album. Love the album. I didn't expect uh, the band to deliver this two piece, <laughs> this two Great. piece uh, album. So that's uh, lovely. Hopefully, I can we can make it to Germany and see this show. Yeah, would be nice. <laughs> absolutely, <before>. absolutely, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a safe touring and uh, have a even better shows. Thank you very much, and thanks to everybody for your support. Absolutely. Bye bye. All right, bye.